Hi folks, this is Ken from Balanced Body. Today, I'm gonna to talk about our fun subject, springs, which I love, right? And it's springtime, isn't it? So let's talk about it. So I think first of all, we'll talk about the parts of a spring, spring nomenclature. This is like fun with flags, but with springs, okay? But I'll be really quick with this part. This solid part right here in the spring is called the barrel, right? This part that goes down is called the taper. These things at the end, this is called, these are hooks. This hook is a hook hook. And this hook over here is because it's round, it's an eye. This is a reformer spring. Simple, right? Um, the length between here and here is called the spring solid length. The next thing I want to talk about is what to look for in a bad spring and when to get rid of your springs. Because guess what? This is the one part of your reformer that at some point it's going to need to get replaced and uh, you will need to replace it. So for that, we have a visual aid. We have a frumpy spring, right? Okay, so uh, here we have a spring that's been overextended and it's got a, a number of problems. So first of all, you've got a distortion here. It goes bloop, 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 okay? Um, if you see this on a spring, it's time to get rid of your spring, okay? The other thing to look for in a spring are separations. So this spring has a little bit of a separation, but a separation is when the coils of the spring go out like this, okay? And if you see a separation on your spring with the coils going sideways like this, kind of in a V shape, again, it's a sign that that spring has sprung and it's time to get rid of it, okay? One other thing to look for is if you take a spring off and you can compress it, then it's a bad spring. That means that spring's been overstretched, it's more likely to break, it's time to get rid of it. And th the way you can tell if a spring has been overstretched is if you start to look through it and you can start to see light in between the coils, okay? Or if you, when you push the spring together, if it goes together, it really should feel, when you're pressing the spring together, like a stack of coins, okay? So that's the important thing. Those are the things you look for. So you want to look for, can you compress the spring? This is a spring that you can't, shouldn't be able to compress. Are there separations? Are there distortions? And are there kinks, okay? Those are the things to check for on a spring. If you see any of that stuff, just get rid of your spring, okay? It's really simple. The next thing to know about is, you know, kind of how to take care of your springs and how to make them last longer, okay? So there's a couple of things you need to know about that. First of all, Rotate your springs on your reformer. It's a really easy thing to do. You know, you can move the red springs from the outside to the inside, you move the ones on the inside to the outside, and keep a log of when you're rotating your springs. It's really simple, and your springs will last longer. It's just like rotating your tires. If you rotate your springs, do it every quarter or every six months, whatever you can remember, whatever you can do consistently, you'll get a stronger, more reliable life out of your springs, okay? The other thing is, is when you're not using your reformer, Put a couple of springs on there and then just let them hang there. It's a good thing. You don't want to really leave a, a, a spring stretched out in place. It doesn't do the spring any good and it lets moisture get in there. And while we're talking about moisture, the important thing is, is if you're in a room that has a lot of moisture or has condensation, and we see this a lot, you know, you'll know sometimes when the air conditioning comes on and off and sometimes condensation builds up on your machine, moisture is the enemy of almost all metals. So if you're, springs or you're getting condensation building up on your reformer and on your springs, get a dehumidifier, dry the place off, change it. You know, if you're going to work in an atmosphere where you're getting condensation, you probably need to replace your springs all the time. You know, when you start to see rust, corrosion or anything like that, it's just a bad place for springs to be. Okay. And then I think the last thing is how often you should replace them. And we're telling people right now that we think, you know, um, uh, uh, two years is about the right time. But if you're using like your reformer and you're using it in a fitness situation, or you're using it constantly all the time, and if it's kind of a, a commercial, high use, high fitness, you know, constant use, you should replace your springs every year. Just to be on the safe side, one year is about the best time to replace the springs if you want to be on the safe side, and it's what we recommend. If you're just in a general studio, a Pilates studio where it's, you know, people are watching you and it's, it's slower paced and, um, and, and you're not moving the, con the machine constantly, you know, you could probably get by with two years. Um, one more thing, noise. People talk about noise. Springs make noise, guys. You know, you get borings, you know, and, and little ringing sounds and stuff. 
99% of the time, it doesn't matter. It's usually just the spring sliding over the hook in the reformer, or sometimes when you're using the spring, as it pulls on it, it twists a little bit, and as it twists, it makes that boringy noise. You know, if these noises don't start getting really loud, it's not a big deal. It's just the noise that the spring makes and on, the, on the hook. So don't worry about it, you know. What you need to worry about is clanks. What you really need to worry about is looking at your springs, checking them, making sure that they're in good condition and they're properly mounted and on their hooks. One more thing. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I realize that, you know, lots of times when the people put reformer springs on, on carriages, they, on the reformers, the reformers are upside down, and what they do is they hook the springs in from the bottom, so when the spring is hanging on the underside of the carriage, it's actually hanging like this, and so when it goes back and forth, this, the hook can come out. So you need to make sure that you hook the carriages, the, the springs onto the carriage, so that the hook is, goes down when the spring is actually, and the carriage is in the proper position, okay? So hook down on the carriage, make sure you do that, otherwise your spring's gonna fall off the, fall on the floor, that's gonna make a dumb noise, and it's gonna embarrass you, so you don't wanna do that. Okay, we're back in engineering, and I wanted to take a minute to show you how cool our springs are, or why they are so cool. Uh, the first thing you should know is that our springs are made by a company that just makes springs. They make springs for some of the largest manufacturing companies in the United States. They're an ISO certified company and they you follow ISO standards to manufacture the springs. But the other really cool thing is that Balanced Pilates got over 40 years of experience manufacturing Pilates equipment using springs and, using, and working with different spring companies. So we've learned a lot over the years. And one of the things that we did with all our knowledge is that we created this uh, patented end of spring thing, which is not just this taper, the taper is not new, that was something that Joseph Pilates used, but it's the fact that we've got this silent little ball in there that allows a spring hook to rotate so well. So between the ISO certification, the patents on our springs, and then the fact that we do an extensive quality control on our incoming springs. So what we'll do with our springs is not only do we have a spring tester that ex ex tests about how many extensions and contractions it takes, but we also measure our springs on, a, on this device behind us that will tell us, it measures for consistency, so it'll tell us if each spring meets a certain amount of resistance at certain parts of the elongation, that uh, we'll know if we got consistent springs and that you'll get consistent springs as well. When you're using a spring, if you want to ensure that the spring lasts, lasts a long time, um, on reformer it's not so important, but on your Cadillac, where springs can be overstretched, you don't want to stretch a spring more than three times its solid length. So for instance, this spring right here is about 15 inches or 38 centimeters. You only want to extend it to about 45 inches or about 114 centimeters. If you stay under those general parameters, your spring will last a lot longer. All right, so now we talked about springs. You know what you need to know about springs. Keep track of springs. You didn't ask me what to do with your old springs. This is what you do with your old springs. Next time you're gonna to go to a party, wear your springs, be proud of it. Happy Pilates.